Hey guys, welcome to another video on next generation sequencing data analysis. Um, in the previous video, I introduced you guys, you know, TCR, the R package, and also um, we we started to do some analyzing of our samples. You know, we, we had file one, two, and three, which we downloaded from the SRA database, and we put them all together, we bundled them up in a list, um, but we won't do that in this video, because in this video, we're actually not gonna use much of the TCR um, kit, but instead we will just parse them so i parsed them already right this is what we did in the previous video as well because our files were uh, aligned using myxcr we use the parse.myxcr command and we choose our file one or file two or file three and uh, you just make sure that wherever uh, these files are you first go to here in your browser and you set it as a working directory so i just wanted to show you how to manipulate and how to work around using some r commands how to work around your data frame right here. So you have this table, right, of file one, for example, with all this information on the repertoire of this file, of this um, sample. So you have, for example, the account, you know, so this clone which I have right here is occurs 24,000 times and it makes up 27% and this one makes up 18%. So let's go ahead and learn some basic R commands to work with this stuff. Like, let's say I want, I want to just have a list now for, you know, to show my supervisor, I just want to, during the lab meeting, have a list of the count and uh, amino acid uh, sequence of these files. So I want to have a separate object or a separate, a separate file where I just get these two, uh, this two, uh, these two columns. For this, you could just, you know, I stick here with my text editor so we can keep track of things. You can do following, yeah? First, assign whatever you want to do to a to our object so we just name this object let's say uh, count of amino acids count aa and we assign following command this is now a, a r command this has nothing to do actually with the tcr package we just use t the tcr package to um parse our files to get get it in this format so now we write following yeah file one th now we're calling this object in our global environment and now you write dollar sign. And now it already gives you a list of the different columns of that data frame. And we can choose count uh, the, the umi.count and press OK. And now this should, uh, oh, sorry, press CTRL enter. And now you will have this new uh, list where it took all of the information from that column. Now you can do the same thing for uh, count, sorry, now you can just say just AA uh, sequence and do the same thing, say file one and choose the, uh, the dollar sign and now you can choose from the different columns and we can say uh, CDR3 amino acid sequence, do the same thing. So again, CDR enter and there you go. It has now these two um, new sort of values in your global environment. So let's go ahead and now bind them together to cause to to have to to have one sort of file, uh, you can do this by just choose again one um, object that you want to name this. Yeah, so we just say count AA two. I don't just not very creative right now. So I use count AA two, and you can write C bind. So this is column bind, and you can now choose these two um, values that you want AA and count AA, or let's say the other way around count AA and just AA and now you have this new file right here open that up and you see here you have now your uh, so you have a new object here in your data you can click it open and you see you have now a new table with the information of count AA and obviously you could call this differently if you like you know make sure you assign the object name differently to um, have the right header names you can also something else you'll learn now in R. you can change the header name so how do you change the header name there are different methods and we'll just use one now so you can write down call names and you choose now the uh, data frame that you uh, the object or data frame that you want to change it with and you put that in the brackets after that and after those brackets you open two uh, so open and close square brackets and in here you write it again call names um, again with uh, normal brackets you write down count a2 and after that you write two equal signs 
and you write the old name. So the old name of that, um, of the first, you know, you have to name which one you want to change. So the first one is count AA, just count AA. And then you can now here assign as if you're assigning an object, assign the new name to it. So we can call this, for example, just count, you know, and uh, just CTRL enter because we're writing from the editor and now it should be changed to just count. So you can copy and paste this, right? You can copy and paste this um, and do the same thing for the other column, which is just AA for amino acid. And let's say we wanna, we wanna change AA to write out amino acid. So, you know, you can write out am, uh, amino acid and CTRL enter. So now you open up this R frame. Oh, you have to refresh it. There you go. Count and amino acid. That's how you change the columns. What else can we do now using R? You can do basic calculations. So you know how we, when we look at the file one right here, we see the count right here and you, you know that for example, you have you know how uh, to you know how many rows you have so you can look either just here file one and it says 748 rows and in this format of the tcr format right here you know that this means that there are 748 clonotypes in your sample now you could find it out by not looking here by just also typing um typing in here you can just use following command n for number row and in brackets you write down which data frame you want to know the row number for from so you can say i want it for uh, file one and there you go and down here it printed now the number 748 you can obviously assign this to file one uh clonotypes and then it'll just save it for you somewhere here and you know it's 748 um then you could also if you want to uh, let's say you want to now, you know the clonotype number, but you want to know how many reads are there actually. In the, uh, I'm just going to close this up. Here, in here, how many how many reads are in this whole sample in total? I don't want to know the clonotype number. I want to know how many reads do I have? How many sequences? So you can go ahead and do that as well by writing up sum and then in brackets, you write down the name of the data frame file one dollar sign to choose exactly what which column do you want us uh do you want to do the uh, to use sum on and we want it on count right here and now if you press ctl enter it will tell you right there down there it will print there are um you know almost eighty-seven thousand sequences or reads in there so this is how you can, there are so many commands like this. And once you start using R, you, you keep learning more and more of these really handy commands. So let's say now you didn't have this column right here that tells you to read proportion, right? You don't know that this is 70, uh, 27%. So how could you calculate, um, having just these two informations, how could you calculate, for instance, how much um, this, this top, clonotype how much percent is it from the whole repertoire it's a you know simple mathematical equation so let's just we saved file one clonotypes here let's say file one total number in here so we assign the sum oops ctrl enter and now we would need the number of whatever we want to calculate the percentage for so you know we want this uh this number right here the from the first row the, the count right here. So that's, you know, also a different uh, um, sort of code that you can, or command that you can write. You type, um, so file one, and now you use the dollar sign to assign which column you're using, right? And we wanna just calculate the percentage or the proportion for the whole, you know, the whole count column. So all of these, we wanna calculate for every single clonotype. So, we want this to be saved somewhere. So uh, let's let's say we want this to be saved in, uh, actually we have, no, we don't have it anywhere. So this is now, we will call this the data frame. Um, so proportions or percentages, percentage. And we'll now make a mathematical equation. So out of this, so we write file one and we divide file one uh, sort of the the count right 
we, we divide the count by the total number because we want to calculate the frequency. So this is a normal mathematical equation. So you just write down the file one total number. There you go. So this will give you the frequency, but we just want the percentage as well. So, you know, you just have to take this times 100 like this. And this would give you now, um, you press CTRL enter, it will actually give you right here uh, some values, right? So if we were call, if we would call this, like if, if I just say percentage, percentage and press CTRL enter, it'll print it all in our console right here. And you see, so it's not very, you, you, you can obviously tell that this is the first line, second line, third line, you know, 27%, 18%. Let's make sure we have the amino acid name right next to it so we know what it is. So for this, you can just go ahead and say, let's call it percentage two um, uh, or percentage with AA and uh, assign to this now the same thing that we did up there, C bind, and we bind now the percentages. So percentage right here, that object, we bind it together with what we have up here. We created AA, which includes the column with the CDR3 um, amino acid sequence. So AA, you know, we've already made this, we already saved it, it's right, uh, it's right here, okay? So now we bind them together, and now we get a new object right here in our data, and we have percentage and amino acid sequence right here. So we know now this amino acid sequence makes 27% of the whole repertoire. So you can see the potential of using R. Now we've used actually not very complicated algorithms, but again, just think about how much more useful this will be if you have really, really complex calculations that you wanna automate as well. So if, if we could now you know, write this script in a way that you can give him a folder with 100 files and it will do all of this for you and give you a nice text file output where you have whatever information you want to have and whatever graphical output, whatever plots you want to have, it will do it for you. And you learn how to do, how to do a, a bioinformatical pipeline like that um, at nextgenerationsequencinghq.com. So I hope this um, short video showed you more of the potential that you can ha that you can use R for. And in the next video, we will introduce a new tool, tool called VDJ Tools.